Hi, my name is Brian and I like the Micronauts. And if you watch our previous video on our trip to Old Bridge Comic Expo, he bought almost every single issue of Micronauts in the dollar bins. Yep. It's a very good watch. Don't uh, miss it. Almost, Go back and watch it. Yeah, I almost got the entire run of the original Micronauts Marvel comic uh, just from the dollar bins. Yeah, at one convention. At one convention. It was pretty, uh, pretty amazing find. Actually. It's a really good haul mm -hmm. video. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, so I want to get into the history of the Marvel Comics uh, Micronauts. Uh, I'm not going to do a full history of the toys because it's a really complicated rabbit hole and it's going to take a lot of time. I need to do a lot more research uh, because the toy line dates all the way back to 60s G.I. Joe and connects through Japan all the way to 80s Transformers. We'll get to that at a later so date. So if you don't want to miss it, subscribe now. Don't miss his full-length, in-depth video on the Micronauts toys. Yeah. This is the world of the Micronauts. A croyer, the enemy and the Micronaut Space Warriors, all sold separately. Space Glider, Galactic Warrior, Time Traveler. Made to fit the Micronaut vehicles, like the Photon Sled, you can stage make-believe battles against a Croyer. Like all Micronauts, a Croyer has interchangeable parts, so you can create your own toys. Micronauts, made of plastic and die-cast metal, each sold separately by Mego. Yeah, it's actually really Coming soon. interesting behind-the-scenes story, and we'll get to that eventually. But just for now, uh, just to give us context, uh, the Micronauts originally were a toy line produced by Mego in the United States between 1976 and 1980. Uh, possibly it was the last new toy line Mego put out before they went out of business. And they bought the rights to a line that was put out in Japan uh, by a company called Takara, which was called Micro, it was called Microman in Japan. And they bought the rights to this toy line specifically to compete with Kenner's Star Wars line. Uh, they which had they originally, passed on. Right, they had originally passed on the rights to and Star Wars. And it doomed Wars. them. It doomed the Mego Corporation. Uh, so normally when you have a toy tie-in with a comic book, it's that the toy company goes to the comic book company and says, uh, you know, we'd like you to put a comic series out in order to push the toys. Like they did with G.I. Joe. Like they did with G.I. Joe, Transformers, and Shogun Warriors, which we already covered the We did a whole of. issue, a whole episode on right. the Shogun Warriors. It's fantastic. It's actually got me addicted to it now. Yeah, he's now buying the I'm Shogun buying Warriors right comics. Here. There you go. Thank you, mm -hmm. Boba Fett. Well, this happened... What happened with the Micronauts was actually almost the opposite of that. What happened was Bill Mantlo gave a bunch of Micronauts toys to his son, Adam, in for Christmas 1977. And when he got a look at the toys, he was inspired by what the toys looked like and how they played and all this I other a, stuff. I have a question for you. Yeah. Who the hell was buying Micronauts toys in 1977? I had some from 77. Uh, so 1977 was Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, I know, but they mixed well with Star Wars because they were around the same size right. and they had a much better articulation. I think I had one Micronaut yeah, in we'll my get, whole we'll, life and we'll, wasn't really a we'll big fan of that. it. So anyway... He saw these toys, and he was inspired to tell a story uh, about these characters that he suddenly made up in his head. He went to editor-in-chief Jim Shooter at Marvel and basically convinced him to buy the rights from Mego so that he could produce a comic line based on these toys. And he wrote all 59 issues. They went from January of 1979 to August of 1984. And they, it outlasted the toys? Yeah, well outlasted the toys by four years, yeah. And uh, they were illustrated by comic luminaries like Howard Chaikin, oh. Gil Kane, Kelly Giffen got some his early work done on the Micronauts. Howard Chaikin, we hear a lot on our... Howard Chaikin did a lot of work for Marvel about in the, the 90s, 70s and the late 80s. 70s. Yeah, he really did. did a lot of work. The, uh, the story of the Micronauts is actually, for a toy line uh, tie-in, it was actually kind of dark and sort of complicated. It was very high-stakes storytelling. Uh, main characters were killed off. Uh, never to come back. Um, there was a lot of dark sort of stories. It was basically the story of a rebellion against an evil villain called Baron Karzar, who could really kind of a Darth Vader ripoff, but um, who ruled the microverse by using something called the body banks. Basically, he could sell immortality to rich people by using the dead bodies of poor people and then basically recycle their bodies so rich people could live forever. So it had this very weird sort of class struggle uh, dark tone to it. Um, and it, like I said, ran for 59 issues. Some of the stories were incredible because, again, main characters died and never came back. Uh, anything, you had the feeling of just about anything could happen. Other than the 59 issues, there was also a four issue limited series of X Men and Micronauts, which was co written by Bill Mantlo and Chris Claremont. Who was writing X Men at the time. Right. And 
that was out in 1984, a four-issue limited series. They followed the end of the original Micronauts run with a soft reboot that was called The Micronauts, The New Voyages, which ran from October of 84 to May of 1986. It ran for 20 issues. Gonna have to buy those too. And eventually I'll have to get to those too. Uh, then The Micronauts went quiet for a while and Image tried to restart the series. In June of 2002, they put out 11 issues until September of 2003. It really didn't work out because they couldn't get some of the main characters from the Marvel. Because the main characters in the Marvel books were creations of Bill Mantlo. And as long as they didn't use any references to the toys specifically, those characters could reappear in other oh. Marvel comics, which they did. If you go through a Marvel, you'll find appearances by Bug, Arcturus Ran, Marionette, characters from the Micronauts that don't, as long as they don't specifically reference Micronauts, can show up in other Marvel so stories. this is, the Micronauts are part of the Marvel Universe? They exist in a quantum universe okay. that's next to the Marvel Universe, and they would go back and forth between the two. So in the, Mar the mainstream Marvel Universe, they're about the size of action figures, about three ah, and three-quarter size. Okay. And they co, they, you know, mixed together with characters like Nightcrawler. And so Dr. that's why Doom. that Nightcrawler issue, he looks big compared to them. Because he's being gigantic small. compared uh, to them, right? So could, could they actually be in the MCU at some point? There's been a lot of talk. They're now owned by Hasbro. Okay. Because Hasbro's Including buying Including Bill Mantlo's characters? Or no? Uh, no, not Bill Mantlo's, but the, the name Micronauts. Ah, uh, okay. So the Arcturus Ran, Marionette, Bug, they could appear. A Croyer can't. A Croyer's owned by Hasbro. Now. That's interesting. Yeah. So. Hasbro are they're trying to create their own kind of cinematic universe built around Transformers, yes. G.I. Joe. They want to do a Micronauts story, but it's gonna be a Hasbro Micronauts. It won't be the Marvel. Won't be a Marvel one. Right. Okay. It's not gonna be the Marvel one. Uh eventually the license went to Devil's Due Publishing. They got three issues out in uh from March of two thousand four to the summer of two thousand four. It really didn't fly very well. I don't know why. Then finally, IDW got Micronauts because of their deal with Hasbro. IDW does comics based on the entire Hasbro universe, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Micronauts, Rom the Space Knight. Yeah, Marvel has right. doesn't have the rights to any of those anymore. Right. They have Marvel has the rights to things like Space Knight, yeah. and uh Arcturus Ran and characters from Micronauts, but not. But the not full they don't they run. don't have G.I. Joe Transformers or Rom. Exactly. Uh and IDW did a comic that ran from April of 2016 to March of 2017, ran about 11 issues. And then they had a five-issue miniseries called The Wrath of Karza that followed. Uh, so far, they've only shown up in the IDW universe interacting with Rom, the Space Knight. Okay. Uh, but there's always hope that they'll be brought back for another run because IDW's had a lot of success with a lot of the Hasbro stuff. They really stuff. have. They, they produce some good stuff. They IDW. really do. Their stories they really are do. really good. Yeah, they have some yeah. good writers over there. So if you have fond memories of the Micronauts uh, and of any of those other... Um, Do, have they put these in a collection at all? Do you know? No. no. Marvel so has they, never collected So the them. only way to get them is to get the back issues the like actual you bought back at issues like I got. Yeah. Really? That's interesting. They don't they, have any collections as far as wow. I know. And the comics are not on the Marvel Unlimited app because the name Micronauts is owned by Hasbro over at IDW. So, in all, so honestly, the only way to read these is to buy the, the back only issues. way is to get the back issues. You'd think they'd be worth more. Right? Yeah. Because it's the only way to read the only, them. If, you know, if you yeah. are a Micronauts fan, you saw our episode when we went yeah. to the convention. Brian bought them for a dollar. So if you're a fan, check the yeah. dollar bins at your local comic shop at a convention. You may be able to pick these up for really cheap. Yeah. And they are worth reading. Uh, unlike a lot of mo uh, um, unlike a lot of toy tie-ins, they aren't just a commercial. These were really well-told stories. Oh, Bill about Mantle's really, a great writer. Yeah, they were really well-developed characters. And I think that goal goes back to the idea of the fact that he was inspired to write the stories rather than told to. Right, and he had no one telling him what to do. He exactly. was writing them on his own. They they gave him pretty much carte blanche, oh, especially great. after Mego ended. Uh, yeah, he no was one able cared. To do he wasn't he telling me. That's great. Right. Yeah, so it was a lot of really cool stuff that happened in that comic. Um, so, yeah, if you like this and you want to see our history of the Micronauts... Uh, the toy line that's coming up. Subscribe now and please give us a like and comment. Uh, did you read the Micronauts? Did you read the X Men and Micronauts series in the yes, 80s? That I did. Do you, did you read the IDW Hasbro stuff? I'm actually going to look into I know, but I, I, I have number one from the Hasbro. This is actually, uh, I, and I don't say it's a very video, this is actually a really interesting video. I had no idea about the history of Micronauts. I'm yeah. not a fan. 
this is a really interesting history. Yeah, because again, it's kind of like Bill Metlo got this property and then was able to go rogue. And then how Marvel, the, one of the biggest comic yeah. companies around mm -hmm. now and at that time, yeah. just said, yeah, okay, we'll buy this sure. to you and let you write it. Yeah. It shows you how much power Bill Mantlo had at the time. Yeah, I mean, he was already, we're pretty well known. Yeah, he's actually still writing stuff now. He has something coming out soon. Oh, yeah? He's wrote um, Rocket Raccoon. There's a one-shot mm -hmm. coming out soon, mm -hmm. and he wrote it, did which he is nice the, to see. Did he write the four-issue limited series of Rocket Raccoon? I don't know. Oh, because that's a good one. He he wrote it in, yeah. in the Hulk when he appears in that Hulk. Oh, issue. okay, cool. So again, if you like this, subscribe for more. Give us a like, comment, let us know what you think. Share us with your friends. Yep. And until we see you again, love what you collect. Collect what you love. We'll see you next time. See you later.